Hello everyone. Welcome to this second webinar of our series Navigating to Cyberland. I'm glad to see everybody in this list here joining from whatever country or city or place you are in. Just before I start, I would appreciate if you just uh, tell me in the chat that you can hear my voice, that you can see the shared desktop. All right, thank you, Muhammad. Thank you, Walid. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, everybody. I hope everybody is excited for this. Thank you, Ali. Hi, Sam. Welcome. Hassan. Welcome, Hassan. I hope everybody, Joseph also is online with us. I hope everybody is excited about this uh, webinar, about this uh, episode. It's going to be fully, fully practical, unlike the previous one where we had like more of a slides and more of uh, concepts and theoretical uh, material. Even though we discussed a tool last time, this time uh, it's going to be fully practical, hands on. Uh, it's going to be a walkthrough, uh, a guided hacking session. Okay, something very interesting. Um, some of you might be familiar with this type of hacking, something we call capture the flag, where we have a vulnerable machine and we try to root this machine. We try to get to root and try to get a file called the, the flag file under the root home directory. Um, I have in front of me the vulnerable machine. It's called Moonraker. Okay, it's a vulnerable machine uh, designed and uploaded to a hub called VulnHub. So if you go to the website VulnHub.com, you can see hundreds and thousands of vulnerable machines that you can practice your hacking skills on. And one of them is called Moonraker. Iman, welcome, Iman. Good to see you with us. So, and this Moonraker machine is considered uh, difficult. So it's not uh, beginner level, not medium level, but sort of advanced level. And we're going to simplify all the concepts and all the steps and the phases to root this machine together. And please, as I go along, if you have any question, you can interrupt me at any moment and you can type the questions in the questions section or you can write it even in the chat and you tell me what your question is and then I will be happy to answer it. So I have a VM, the Moonraker VM right over here and then next to it I have the Kali box which is my attacker machine and we're going to see how we can root this machine, all of us, together. I have prepared a few slides over here, not to bore you actually with the slides, but because there are certain principles that we need to, gov to cover, important principles, as we go through this hacking sessions. The first principle is related to information gathering. So. This is something not only in capture the flag. This is something even if you do a professional penetration testing, even if you do like a real life hacking example, you will see that some people might use their password, their username, their credentials according to themes of movies or according to themes of uh, something of a geographical nature, for example. So you have to do enough information gathering so that you are able to guess passwords, usernames, uh, questions and answers, and you might be able to figure out the nature of your target. And since we are attacking this machine that's called Moonraker, uh, Moonraker happens to be uh, one of those uh, James Bond's movies that was published in 1979. It's a beautiful movie. I really urge everybody to actually watch it. It's a very action-oriented movie. 
and it's about a uh, space shuttle. Uh, the Moonraker in that movie is, is a space shuttle developed by a company. And this company is owned by a guy called Hugo Drax. The company is called the Drax Company. And the owner and the founder is Hugo Drax. So he developed the Moonraker. However, it was sold to the US government and then it was stolen. And what happened was James Bond was given the task of chasing the thieves of the Moonraker, who happened to be the very company itself that developed the Moonraker, Hugo, Dara, Hugo Drax and his team. And one of his team members is a scientist called Holly Goodhead. Even though she works in Hugo's team, she's considered like one of the nice guys and she would help actually James Bond against to actually chase Hugo. And another guy under Hugo Drax's team is Joe's. Joe's is uh, somebody who kills people. This is the man over here. And he met his girlfriend, Dolly. So, and if you do just quick Google search on the Moonraker, you can find there are even uh, other characters uh, in that movie and other plots and storylines. But these are very important because they are relevant to our hacking session over here as you're trying to hack uh, the Moonraker machine. So, so just keep this in mind. So the first principle is we have to do enough information gathering, open source information gathering to search about our targets, uh, to go to the social uh, social media of our target and try to guess their pets names, for example, friends, places, hobbies, uh, movie themes they like and they talk about because they help us in figuring out like aspects of their credentials and password. And we're going to see this in the Moonraker itself. So before we go into the practical aspect now, let me just give you a little background about me for those who are joining for the first time and who haven't joined the previous one. Um, I'm the lead of the Cyber Institute at Axon Technologies, and I'm a consultant and trainer. And I have worked previously uh, in the GCC and Europe, and I have over 15 years of experience in cybersecurity. And the Cyber Institute is part of Axon Technologies company that specialize in providing different cybersecurity services, such as SOC as a service, such as penetration testing, consulting, engineering, architecture, and deployment of security products. And in the Cyber Institute, we have tracks and curriculums and courses and training in different aspects of cybersecurity, such as pen testing, security operations, and also incident response and forensics. So let us start. The first thing I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume over here that I have no clue since I am over here the hacker and at my Kali desk. I have no clue about the machine that's called Moonraker. Okay. All I know is I have an IP address. I have an IP address in the range of 192.168.127. This is my IP address or my subnet address. And I would like to discover all the IP addresses, the IP addresses in my subnet. And prob probably I'm gonna stumble across an interesting subject. So what do I do? I have different methods available for me to perform this, what we call host discovery. So the first step is to do host discovery to try to figure out what systems are attached to my subnet next to me. And for this, I have the best tool available for host discovery and network mapping, which is NMAP, stands for network mapping. And I'm going to give it the minus SN to disable the port scanning feature and only activate the host discovery. 
and then I'm gonna give it the subnet mask. So nmap does host discovery and port scanning at the same time, but when I give it the minus sn, I switch off the port scanning and I tell it to only do host discovery. So let's figure out what systems are available on my subnet. Now, the dot one over here is a probably the gateway, okay? The dot two is another uh, important uh, IP addresses given by VMware. So probably this is gonna be the gateway and the DNS, and this probably is the DHCP server or vice versa. So the first two in my subnet are reserved for VMware, okay? And the last one, in my subnet, which is the 254, this is at the end of the range, is it probably reserved also for VMware. So what I am, what I have over here is uh, our two IP addresses that are not reserved by VMware, the 152 and the 139. And if I check over here, my own IP is 139. So probably there is an interesting machine that I have no clue what it is just attached to my network and that's at the 152. So at least I have a catch now. I know there is a machine, okay, attached to my network. I don't know anything about this machine and probably it's gonna be the Moonraker machine. We're gonna discover what this machine is, but this is how all hacking starts. You do host discovery and from there you pick your target and you go along. So the next step after I do host discovery, and just to give you other ideas, if you don't like Nmap and you would like to use other tools, there's an interesting tool called Net Discover, okay, that does exactly, uh, exactly the same job. So you can discover uh, available IP addresses around your network using this tool, Net Discover. And you have also the ARP scan minus L, where you discover available IP addresses on your, on your subnet as well. But I like the NMAP, um, NMAP uh, technique or tactic. It's my favorite tool and I love to use it for host discovery and also for port scanning as we're gonna see next. So the next step now, once I know the IP addresses, I need to do port scanning. Now, Nmap has different ways to do port scanning. You can do quick port scanning, you can do uh, full port scanning, you can do port scanning that is uh, that covers all the port, the 65 something, the 65,000 and something uh, ports, or you can do port scanning that only focuses on the most common ports or the most, uh, the top uh, 1,000 ports. What I would advise you here is to do two port scanning, the quick and the full, if you do not care about traffic. So if you do not care about traffic, as in our case, and all you care, uh, yeah, and all you care about is speed and you would like to finish quickly, so what I would recommend is to run two port scanning, the quick one, which is nmap. Now I disable the host discovery, so I'm disabling the host discovery to focus only on port scanning. And then I'm going to enable service version identification, which means I would like to know what service runs on what port. So if I have port 80 open, I would like to know if this is Apache version 2.4 or if this is IAS version 8 and so on. And I would like to know the operating system using minus O. And then I'm going to give it the IP address that I have just discovered, the 152. Notice here I have not included any port range. And by doing so, Nmap is going to scan only 1,000 ports, which are the top or the most common 1,000 ports. So this should finish very quickly. And while I'm running this, I can go ahead and run a more thorough port scanning where I would scan all ports. So I would give it minus P uh, slab, minus P 
minus, which means scan all ports. Basically, all the all basically to scan all the range, uh, the entire range of ports. I can I should do something like one, two, six, five, three, three, five, six, five. Six, five, three, three, five. However, since these are the default values, I can omit them, and I would simply end up with a minus. So this really means scan all ports, and then I would give it minus a, and minus a would actually include the service version and the operating system fingerprinting plus something we call. Uh, script scan, script scan, where Nmap would run additional scripts against open ports to figure out additional information about those open ports. And then I would give it my IP address of the Moonrec or of my target machine. Now, why do I do two scans? The reason is this, since it is a full scan, it's going to take some time. It's going to take like three or four or five minutes. So instead of me being idle, just waiting, not doing anything until this finishes, if I want to hurry up, if I want to speed up my assessment, I have the quick scan over here. And then I try to assess the open ports here. And then after I finish my assessment here, I can come to this one to see the results that have come uh, later. So let us look at the open ports given by the um, by the quick scan. It has discovered these three ports, uh, 22, port 22, and this is SSH service. So I have SSH, and this is the exact version. It's open SSH version 7.4, and then port 80, which is HTTP, and I have Apache version 2.4.25. And then I have an interesting port here, which is 3000, and it's running Node GS or Node JavaScript Express Framework. We're going to talk about this in a while. Okay. And then it's telling me that the Linux version is 3. Point something or 4. Point something. So it's either the kernel, either 3 or 4, version 3 or 4. And somewhere here I have more accurate. Uh, more accurate uh, details. So it's telling me it is between version 3.2 and 4.9. Um, this is important to figure out any kernel vulnerabilities, even though it's giving me a large range. So I cannot know exactly what version it is. So let's let's look at the first one, SSH, open SSH 7.4 P1. When I see SSH open on my target machine, I have a couple of attack vectors over here. I can try to access the SSH and do uh, brute forcing of the credentials. We have a tool called Hydra, and it has um, it has a graphical interface called XHydra. So it can do some brute forcing against SSH. OK, so if I know some usernames over here and I would like to brute force, I have the XHydra to attack the, the, uh, the open SSH. Additionally, since I know the version over here, I can check if this version is vulnerable. So how do I check if this is vulnerable or not? Without using like a tool like Nessus, I can simply go to a website. Um, the website exploit DB. And another website, which is the CVE details. And I can easily copy the version of my open SSH here, copy, and then I go to CVE details here and try to see what vulnerabilities exist 
on that version. Like there are two vulnerabilities over here. Okay. There are like five score. They are not very, very dangerous, medium level. Okay. I don't know if they have public exploits against them or if we can attack them directly. So the CVE details will tell me about the vulnerabilities, but the exploit DB will tell me if there are vulnerabilities for this version. And it seems no vulnerabilities so far. So something like less than 7.7. .7. Um, we have here few others since my version is 7.4 it seems the only thing i have for 7.4 you see this, this is this is less than 7.4 so this is a remote exploitation but less than 7.4 this these three fall uh, my, my my version fall within the range of these exploits however the only uh, attack i can do is user enumeration so i cannot get a shell i can discover if a user exists or not so it doesn't seem to be like a major public exploit for this uh, version the other thing i can do i can do the same for apache httpd for this uh, thing i can copy it and check it and if we do some search, we can find there are two vulnerabilities. Uh, and these are the IDs and, and both of them were discovered in 2019. I can discover them in, in uh, CVE details, search for them in CVE details. Okay, but they have very, very limited impact. Like if you go to their website, if you search about these vulnerabilities, nothing much can be done about them and there are no like public exploits to actually get root or get the shell on the machine another thing when i see port 80 open is to browse the website so directly i will have a few attack vectors that i can do i can open my web browser and it's always recommended when you do uh, web assessment for any web application is to open next to your web browser to open an intercepting proxy. This is something you should always, always do. Never browse your target if you are doing like pen testing or, or uh, ethical hacking against a website. Always browse the website using an intercepting proxy. And a very, very common intercepting proxy, which I always like to use, is the OWASP zap or z attack proxy so i fire my zap and then i would point my browser to to my local proxy because zap acts acts as a proxy so if if you have no proxy make sure you set it to manual and then point it to your local host and port 8080 uh, this is the default port on on zap proxy of course you can always change it from the tools option and then you can change it somewhere here there's something about the proxy somewhere somebody is asking if zap offers the same features available in burp suite yes and more for me, Zap is even better than Burp Suite, the free version and the commercial version. Burp Suite has a free version and commercial version. Zap is completely free and has all the features of Burp Suite and even more. It's very portable. It works in Linux, Windows, and Mac. It's totally free, very portable. It is developed and maintained by OWASP organization which is an authority in web application security and they have all the features and even more that's why i always love to use zap proxy anyways so um i fire up my zap proxy and then i browse the website which is available at 192.168.127.152 okay and i can see here 
like a video clip playing from the movie Moonraker. Okay, you can see the main characters, uh, Holly and Joe's and James Bond, and also Drax, Hugo Drax. And then I seem to see Moonraker Elite LLC company and then home services and the blog. Okay, let's just stop here and check the next one no gs express this is also an http so there is something on port 3000 that's also browsable uh, so i can access 192.168 uh, 152 on port 3000 let's see what i have on here okay this is password is cached cached so it seems it's asking me for a password for credentials something probably we need to hack in a while poor moonraker regulations you need to authenticate now if i go to my zap proxy i i should investigate all the traffic that was going through so when i access uh, the 152 on port 80 i can see the request and the responses okay i can see here the html code that was given uh, the css javascript okay another link that's not found I can see the audio file that was played at the beginning. I can see this is a web movie file that was the movie clip played at the beginning. Another JavaScript, and this is the access to 3000 port. Okay, and I can see that unauthorized, we need to authenticate. So it was giving us uh, basic authentication. Okay, so, so on port 3000, I also have something that i can browse now what is node.js let me explain something about node.js node.js is a runtime environment okay runtime environment similar to the runtime environment you are familiar with something like java runtime environment or a python runtime environment however node.js as a runtime environment runs only javascripts okay so typically Typically, JavaScript would run only within your web browser. So within the client web browser, your JavaScript would run. However, with Node.js, you can write JavaScript for desktop the way you write Python scripts. And with Node.js, you can even write JavaScript for the web server the way you write PHP and ASP and GSP. So Node.js, uh, made something called uh, called JavaScript anywhere. So you can write JavaScript everywhere, not only on your browser, but also on the web server, on the on the desktop application. So it's, it makes everything automated using JavaScript. Now, let's go back to our full scan over here. And let's see the results. You see, that's why I told you you need to run both because by the time this finishes, we already got we already saved a few minutes by browsing the sites and gaining some ideas about existing services while the full scan was running. So the full scan discovered port 22, which we already discovered it in the quick scan, and then port 80, and then 3000. And then it discovered additional ports. So I have 4369. This is Erlang port mapper daemon. This is a server that's meant to uh, distribute, uh, that's meant to actually give information about distributed nodes inside the server. And the Erlang port mapper, the EPMD, would give you information about. Uh, about certain applications and one of them is couch db like the nodes that are available here is couch db sometimes you can find other nodes like if there are like mysql or there are uh, i don't know mongo db so you can all list them here and you can find them uh you can actually uh like they are mapped using the epmd service however the couch db service over here is already being discovered in this port so what is what is couch db couch db is a database but unlike mysql 
or Postgres or Oracle, uh, CouchDB is called NoSQL database. And in NoSQL database, you probably have heard of this term, NoSQL. NoSQL is a type of database that is meant for uh, large data uh, or big data. You probably have heard of big data and big data cannot be stored in MySQL or SQL databases. They need it in no SQL uh, servers. And we have MongoDB and we have Couch, CouchDB. These are very, very common. And And if we go to their guide, like if we try to browse the guide of CouchDB, uh, CouchDB, we can see a few interesting things. That CouchDB has uh, a web interface called Photon. Photon. So CouchDB, first of all, is developed by Apache company. It's a database. And it can be managed using a web-based interface called Photon, okay, called Photon. And it can be accessed using the IP and then the port number and then slash utils. So let's go back to our machine over here and let's copy this port, copy, and let's open a new tab and let us go to the Moonraker insert the port number and in here I have few information about the couch database and its version okay that <clears throat> as per the guide if you can remember over here that it the photon web interface can be accessed using underscore utils so if I go to underscore utils I should be able to access the project Photon and then uh, I need to log in. So it requires me to enter some username and password. So keep this in mind. We'll be trying to hack all of these username and password on the Photon and 3000. So next step now, let us uh, dive deeper now into our website assessment. Let us assess port 80 more okay the first thing you remember the movie clip that was played in the beginning before it landed on the moon record now because it was so quick we couldn't catch up the html the source code but we can easily go here and try to see it on the response so let me check the source code over here while i'm checking it I can see this is the movie clip that was played and this is the sound, the audio file, okay? And then I see index.js, index.js. Let me copy this index.js and let us uh, open it over here. And let's see if there is anything interesting. Hmm, nothing much. It seems nothing much is interested. It's only about the movie and how it plays with the movie. So we got into this. Let us check the source code. So when I every time I get a web page, I need to browse through Zap Proxy and analyze the request at the go and the responses. And I need to, to pay close attention to the headers that come here. For example, the server, I have Apache 2.4, and sometimes there are cookies, sometimes there are other variables, so I need to pay attention. The other thing I need to do on a web, in every web page on, or every website I come across is to check the source code as well. So when I check the source code over here, look what I find. I find the Moonraker HTML, which is exactly this page, and this is probably the home over here. And then I have the services, which is also over here. And then I have the blog, which is here. And it looks like I also have a comment. And if I read this comment, 
uh, there is a comment. It's hiding. It's trying to uncomment. It's trying to comment. Sorry, uh, a link which is cats and cats gallery. So let's open this link on a new tab. So, and as I'm opening this gallery, the cats gallery, let us open the services as well in a new tab and the blog on a new tab. Okay, the blog. Let's, let us look at the blog. Usually the blog is a dynamic content. So one, one thing I need to keep, uh, to keep my attention on is trying to find any input to the website. So like something like uh, write a comment, write a post, publish a URL, uh, type something on the blog because any dynamic content where I can send the stuff, I can test for injection attacks. So something here, Hugo, the CEO, is like saying offering like a service web development, and then you have got Holly saying, "Hey team, we have a cat gallery. This is the same URL we found. Uh, we just found over here the cat gallery, and then the Moonraker guard is saying something about the uniform, ops safety, talking about the Moonraker tech, and then we have got Joe's, the man who kills." Make sure to visit Rio de Janeiro, blah, 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 anonymous. And this anonymous is advising everybody that Holly is actually helping uh, James Bond, the CIA agent. I cannot really upload anything to the blog, posting currently logged. Let me view the source, the page source, and there are no scripts and no dynamic content, no forms and nothing. Let us check the services, but before the services, let me go, this is the blog, let me go to the cast over here. One thing I always do when I try to do web assessment is anytime I find an image, I download this image. So for something we call metadata analysis. So I need to download every single image I try to find. Now, an easy way to do is to spider the entire website, of course, so you can and zap you can go to the tool and do spider okay and then you would simply do a new scan enter the url 192.168.127.152 and then start the scan and then i would spider everything okay but just keep in mind that i need whether I spider them and then I I get them or I go directly uh, to to the website. Every time I find an image, I need to download the image and I need to check its metadata analysis because sometimes metadata might contain uh, some interesting information. Moonraker uh, live. So images. Okay, I will find the canvas over here. Now, as you can see, I haven't downloaded the image. I have downloaded what we call the canvas. So, canvas.png. Save image as, and it's canvas.png. Is it here? No, is it here? No. Okay, so th this is not the, the actual image because if I go to the second one, do I download this another image? It's also the canvas. So probably I need to do view page source and then let's pick the image to get the source. No, the source URL would not be in the image. Uh, so when I see the page source, okay, I find like a JavaScript file called cat, and then I have all the cats over here. So this is cat one. So let's see if it exists right here. So this is cat one. Now I can download the cat one. 
and then cat2 if you notice it's jpeg without the e then you can download all of them for analysis of metadata now because to save time and i have only done uh, i have already done the exercise i have downloaded all the image analyzed their metadata i couldn't find anything but what you probably you would do if you were doing it for the first time is once you've downloaded an image you would go to the folder Moonraker live and then images and then you have a tool called exif tool and then you give it the name of the image and then it will give you the metadata over here and the metadata would contain like creation date the software the platform uh the the the, uh, the manufacturer it might give you like the owner the description so sometimes uh, useful information can be hidden in the images however because i have done this before as i told you i have uh, enumerated all the images i couldn't find anything interested um, in them let's continue to the services website and this is very important here i have also downloaded the images uh, the background images so let us look at the services website it says Moonraker Elite Services, what do we offer? Space training, our team provides elite space training for all types, outer space construction, the future is now. You go down a little bit. Wait, you guys do data management? Yes, we also provide NoSQL DB support. Remember NoSQL, this is CouchDB. Another new service to manage NoSQL DBs. We host one ourselves, yeah. We already got you. We already got that you host a NoSQL DB called Couch, and we discovered this from our port scanning. Now, let's go a little bit down. What's really needed with all this computer stuff nowadays? Website development and secure code review. Uh -huh. So they do secure code review. We need to review their codes. Let's go down over here. If you are interested in our services, please send an inquiry. There is a URL over here and the sales representative will get in touch with you. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Service page made by Joe's, no links here. So I have one link here. Before I investigate that link, let us view the page, the, the source, view page source of the services page and i don't seem to see something interested over here now if you want to get the the images probably we need to go to the monster.css uh, and you can find the images over here so you can download these images uh, these images are the background over here the space shuttle this image this image so you can download them and also do metadata analysis now, this is the contact us form over here. So I opened it by opening, by going down over here, send an inquiry, okay? And it has given me this, uh, this page. Services information request to provide out of this world service, a sales rep will check your web-based inquiries. So. My inquiry is going to be web-based. What does web-based mean? It's going to be embedded in a web page that is like in the form of hyperlink or something that's visible that the, uh, the user can read in under five minutes. Now, since I know nobody is actually checking the moon record, probably there is a sort of a script that can actually respond to those queries. Enter your name, email addresses. There is a form. So finally, I have found a form. If I check the page source over here, I have found a form. This is very, very interesting. So the entire website is static. No form, no input, nothing. This is the only input I have come across. So it exists in sales web page, sales.html under SVC Inc. Okay. And then 
it sends the the uh, the field one and field two they are submitted to svc processing so let me open this open in a new tab okay this is the page source i can view the page directly all was empty like outer space because i have sent an empty form so the form is being sent to this one so what do i do when i find an input what do i do when i find an input i would like you guys like to tell me a few hints what do i do does anybody of you know like certain things i can do to attack an input a web input sql injection try to generate an error great how do i generate an error Walid? cross site scripting yes sql injection and cross site scripting that's very nice special character excellent excellent so let us do some special character i have single quotes single quote what do i get thank you for your inquiry a sales rep will be checking blah 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 for the web gui for your request note once the sales checks your submitted data will be removed from the web interface list seven bytes written to file so seven even though i have sent two characters seven bytes were written let us do double quote and see something again seven bytes nothing happened no error let us do something like uh, semicolon because this is for command injection again things are working normally i can do something like uh, percentage Now, you're probably familiar with a tool called SQL map. SQL map, buffer overflow. Buffer overflow happens in C programs, like an EXE file or ELF file written in C or C++. It's very rarely to find buffer overflow in, uh, in web application, in JavaScript or PHP or Python even. So buffer overflow, keep in mind, is generally 99% is a C-based vulnerability. So you're probably familiar with SQL injection and, and probably familiar with SQL map, a tool for SQL injection. Try one equal one. This is, this is part of SQL, uh, SQL injection attempt. I have a tool that automates all SQL injection attempts called SQL map. Let us do SQL map against this uh, form. How do I do SQL map attempts? I need to go to a legitimate, uh, something legitimate. So let me send a legitimate. Uh, a legitimate request okay and then catch it up on on zap and i have it over here okay i can do like i merge the header with the data and then i copy the entire thing okay let me copy it because sql map if you are doing a post uh, uh assessment you need to copy the entire post request into a file so let me open a file over here text editor uh, or let me open sublime i prefer sublime more often sublime sublime text okay and then i would save this in my folder moonbreaker live and let me call it sql uh, sqli attempt okay let me save it here and then all i need to do is to actually point my sql map to this file so sql map and then minus r and then i give it the name of the file okay this is how you would do so it's very simple you copy the header along with the data with some legitimate data this is field one asdf asdf over here 
and submit. You copy it all as it is. You put it in a file, and then you you feed it to SQL Map with the uh, switch minus R. So let us go ahead with Kali, and it's doing some assessment now. What do I find over here? Field one might not be injectable. Mm. Looks like the guys are secure from SQL injection. Field one does not seem to be injectable. What about field two? It does not seem to be injectable. So these two fields, by the way, SQL map have done has done already all the attempts we have talked about, like the the codes, the single codes, the double codes, uh, the one equal one, the A equal A, all types of uh, the union attempts. So it sends like uh, tens of uh, injection attempts for SQL injection. So it's not uh, SQL injection, it's not vulnerable to SQL injection. Another thing I can test, somebody said cross-site scripting. This is interesting. Now, with the cross-site scripting, I would enter something like script alert one script, right? Something like this, and then I would send it. However, with SQL injection, uh, sorry, with the cross-site scripting, the, the input should be reflected back to my web browser. So I would send something, and then that input gets reflected back on my web browser. And if there are no filtering, if there is no filtering, the script that I inject is going to be executed by, by my web browser. However, in this example, everything that I type is not reflected on my web browser. However, it lands on someone else's web browser. It lands on the sales representative web browser yes it's a sort of out of band or blind cross-site scripting exactly so it doesn't come to my browser so alert one will not really execute on my web browser however if it's vulnerable to cross-site scripting the sales rep will get the alert he will see the alert so how do i know if it is working on his web browser is i will try to send to contact i will try to to make uh, a hyperlink or an attempt to access a website that, uh, that i control so i would run a web, a web server on my kali machine and then i would ask uh, the script to connect back to me and probably uh, i would do an attempt to actually steal a cookie okay to probably steal a cookie and I already have a script to steal cookies. So this is something, uh, it's a script that I usually um, run to steal cookies whenever there is a cross-site scripting vulnerability. So under var www.html, I have uh, a script called reader dot php let me open this reader dot php okay reader dot php uh, is, a, is a php file that i have hosted on my web server okay it opens a file called cookies okay and then it reads from the url that connects to it a parameter in the get request called cookie and then it saves it to the file okay and then it saves it to the file which is and this file is the cookies file here okay so all i need to do is to etc apache to uh sorry etc in it dot d apache 2 i need to uh, stop if it is running and let us started fresh so i started my apache server and i need to inject here a javascript that connects to my uh, web server and send the cookie of the sales representative if he is vulnerable to cross-site scripting okay 
and if he's using Google, I'm still not sure. Now, I have already prepared the URL here to actually steal the cookie. Okay, I'm gonna explain it now. Uh, this, I think this one. So, now this is a JavaScript code that instructs the, the web browser of the sales representative to redirect or to connect to this is my IP address, this is the Kali IP address, and connect to reader.php, which is the file I just showed you, and then it, it appends a variable cookie, okay, and says it works, and then it concatenate document.cookie, okay? So, let us send this one. Hmm. It says, sorry, no PHP attempts allowed. This is very strange. So probably it has sort of filtering for PHP. So I go back and try to change something over here because I want to know what's actually being detected here. And if I remove the dot over here, it changed to PHTML. Yes, but then I will have to, to change the file as well. So I'm going to try this in a while. So just one second. Reader, PHP, just like that. Even though this file does not exist, so this should give 404 uh, not found error. So, sorry, no PHP attempts allowed. So probably it is detecting any PHP, even if it's not a file extension. So if I do reader.php dot PHTML, let's see, no PHP. So if I remove the PHP like this, okay, it got it. So something went through, something went through. Now, if the dot PHTML uh, actually got executed, okay, it should, the, the, the sales rep web browser should connect to us. However, it will not write any cookie because I don't have a file called reader.phtml. So this file does not exist in my server. However, I can, I can do various things to actually check if this actually worked or not. I can open uh, a Wireshark and I would see uh, if we just make a request to your IP, then we will know from the logs if it works. Yeah, from the logs, I can open a Wireshark or a TCP dump to check it, or I can check the logs of the of Apache server. Okay, and the Apache server logs uh, available at var log uh, Apache to access.log. So let me do cat access.log. Um, looks like it actually made a connection to us. So it made a connection, even though it made it to reader.php, even though it gave a PHP error, uh, not allowed. However, it actually made the, the connection and it gave me 200 okay. Now, I can also check the cookie if cookie was written. So var www.html ls clear ls so cat cookies. Okay, I got it works, it works, it works, it works, it works. So I got only the first portion of my URL. Only I got it works, but I did not get a cookie. So probably the sales rep uh is not using a cookie uh for this particular or his cookie is uh, uh is not is not readable by javascript so it's uh, something we call uh, http only cookie but in any case uh our script got executed our script got executed and the proof of that is the log over here and the cookie file that it has written. Now, when I check the the uh, 
the log over here and I see the request that was made and the response code over here and the byte, the, the length of the request, I can see something interesting over here. This is something we call referrer. What is referrer? They appear in, uh, in the logs. You know, let's say you are accessing your LinkedIn profile, okay? And you see your friends is posting a link uh, to YouTube, okay? And then you open that link from uh, LinkedIn. YouTube will know that you are at, that you have clicked on that link from LinkedIn by a field which is a header actually a header field in the HTTP request we call the referrer. So the referrer is the original web browser, the original web page that referred you to the new link. So this means the sales rep accessed uh, the sales rep. Uh, browser accessed my reader.php from his original web page, which is uh, salesmoongui.php. Okay, and in his local machine, the local host 127.0001. So, this is additional link that I have found over here. I can copy it properly copy selection and then just like I open other let's just open this page okay so this is where the administrator should see our inquiries however if you recall here it says uh, where did we find it we find something that our queries would be deleted as soon as the speed of blah, blah, blah. Yeah, when we send this one, it says, yeah. Once the sales rep checks, your submitted data will, be, will automatically be removed. So this is one reason why when we access this, the sales on GUI, we don't see our inquiries because they get deleted. Okay, however, we see a link over here back to sales admin interface. Okay, sales admin, this is the interface uh, that's, that's used by the sales representative. So we got a new catch now on this machine. A page that is a little bit privileged or should be privileged okay let us investigate it now let me check the page source as usual everything is static a few link over here sales moon couch notes cats gallery again this is the same cats cats gallery that every time it pops up hugo text moonraker which is which are these links okay let me at the same time check the proxy okay so when i access the sales moon this is the sales moon so my request to sales moon the response was let me check if there are like cookies or something no cookies okay and i got nothing over here and then i went to the processing and then this one record index again nothing interesting no cookies okay and this is the very uh, source code we have seen right here so let us investigate this one by one what do we see incoming sales request this is the same page we have checked so we go back couch db notes this is the no sql database hosted at some random notes. Let us read the notes over here. Our new devs are building a front end to work with CouchDB backend. So they are building the front end. For now, most data collections need to be done manually. For you new sales folks, using URL to interact with Couch is a slick. Okay. Using curl, 
which is a tool you know curl it's like uh, wget you can upload content download content uh it's it's a web client that's command line otherwise the front end admin panel is available okay the front end admin panel is available which is i believe this one the photon okay contact me in office if you would like a user created okay so if you would like a user over here contact him in office okay who is that one i don't know probably the admin quick path to check dbs created then you can dive into each if you have permissions so all dbs remember this is a standard couch db if you check the the uh, uh the guide over here okay using photon you have uh, underscore utils to go to the main dashboard and then all dbs to check the available dbs so this is something standard so all dbs so let me copy it and let me put it over here i have three databases replicator users and links okay let me access replicator what do i see replicator blah 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 updates file nothing interesting let me go back links unauthorized you are not authorized to access this db so we cannot access what about users users update do i find sizes other cluster these are all metadata of the database but not the content of the database itself these are metadata okay so let us go back to this one where it is over here for joe's eyes only so this is something secret for joe's the killer the man who kills my password hint uh, so probably joe's has written this for him for himself the hit so probably joe's is the administrator over here and has written all of that so he's talking to himself my password and he saved his password girlfriend's name plus x99 without quotes and from our information gathering we have done initially about the movie we knew that uh joe's who knows what is his uh what is the girlfriend's name who can remember holly not holly there is one letter difference you can see it over here dolly yeah it's dolly so so his password is dolly plus x99 looks like we got a password so let us attempt to access this photon with Joe's username and password uh, Bolly X99. Don't update or something is wrong. Ah, it's not Bolly, it's Dolly. D O L L Y X ninety nine. Log in. Oh, we got in. So, we managed to to get Joe's password, and we see the same three databases available. Now, if we try to go to the setup, we cannot Joe's. Again, it's taking us back. Joe's takes us back. Cannot do any of the changes or modification over here. New replication. Okay. Can we do 
this is documentation. Nothing much. Create a database. Let us check the databases. So replicator, we are unauthorized. Users, unauthorized. And links. What do you find in here? We find, okay, the tables, whether I can view them as metadata, JSON format, okay, or tables, just like this. So we have like four tables. Okay, this is the first table. It's called CAD Photo Gallery. Again, we find, sorry, again, we find the same CAD's gallery every everywhere. Okay, let us check the cat gallery. Looks funny. Holiday spirit. We have this salesman of the year. We have this man. Someone had two friskies. Joe's before his coffee. Because this this cat gallery is so funny, and it's popping up everywhere. I don't know what is the secret, what is uh, the importance of this cat's gallery, but it's popping up everywhere. Every time we get a hand on something, we see a link to this cat's gallery, mountain, Klimpur, two cats. Okay. Let us continue. And then we have security camera clips on Moonraker station. This is, this sounds interesting. So let me copy this one and let us view the footage over here. Okay, footage near Joe's meet someone. This is how Joe's met his girlfriend Dolly okay she fell in love with him from the first sight and of course you need to download this as always save image this is an animated image it's not a movie and then check the metadata as well looks like James Bond infiltrated blah 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 we need to download the image again every single image you come across you need to download and investigate Okay, but as I told you, I have done already that and nothing interested, interesting was found. Let's continue. HR forms, HR confidential offer letters. Let us check this database over here. Sorry, this link over here. Offer letter archive backup. So it's a backup of some offer letters. For Joe's, Holy, Confidential, Hugo, and these are PDF files linked to these. Okay, but let me check the last one over here before checking the PDF. Okay, so I will remove this one, type over here. Okay, data has been moved to a more secure location. Which if there's anything hidden, nothing is hidden over here. Let me check the Zap proxy if I can find anything with the deep space and the response. If there is a cookie or something, nothing over here. So let's go back to the HR document. For Joe's, right click. For Holly, right click. Confidential, Hugo, and Moonraker Guard. So I have offer letter, okay, for job. This is for Joe's. You've been accepted, blah, blah, blah. Head of security. This is his salary, $1.5 million per year. His supervisor is a Hugo. Responsibilities, of course, to get revenge on James Bond. And then we have username and password. This is something interesting. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open here a new. Uh, this is always you should do. Every time you come, across uh, credential you should type it so our first credential was joe's 
and Dolly X99. And this is something that works on photon, photon couch DB web UI. Okay. Now I have another. Uh, this is the same username and password. Okay. So we typed it. Probably it's gonna be useful for for SSH, for example. Okay. So. Maybe we need to check SSH with these credentials as well. So the second letter for Holly, good head. This is his, her salary, her jobs. Again, we have credentials. So maybe we can access SSH. We can access some. Uh, so Holly, and then we have this one. We don't know what this is used for. We will figure out. Next, we have confidential, 50,000, okay? No credential, no privileges, no network access, associate life sustenance, sustainment planner, blah, blah, blah. All of these inf information are important. When you do information gathering, you can find the secret for passwords, certain secret URLs, etc. And then we have an offer to Hugo himself, who is the founder, and at the same time delegated as the CEO. This is his responsibilities, and we have his password. Now, this is interesting over here. So we have Hugo. Okay, this is his password, and it says something here. Please change this as soon as you log in. As you are the CEO, we have created a custom to do page just for you. Okay, a custom page. Please access this by using port 3000 via your web browser. So, okay, thank you very much, uh, Abdullah. Take care of yourself. You can definitely view the recording. Um, so, we found Node.js, of course, open on port 3000. Okay, and Hugo can access this web server. Uh, so this is for, let's call it Node.js, Node.js framework. Okay, on port, port 3000. Okay, and then this is the final one, Moonraker guy, guard. We have this credential for him. So guard. And then let me copy this one, copy. Okay. Before I use the Node.js on port 3000, let me do a quick attempt for SSH. Yeah. Since I know we have SSH. Okay. So, Joe's at 192.168.127.152 and then sorry sudo ssh okay his password is dolly x99 it's not working dolly x99 probably he doesn't have permission for ssh it was only for Photon. Let us access Holly's account. Her password is archives pistols L2K. Again, it's not working. Let us try with Hugo. Password, 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 temple lasers l2k again it's not working so probably these accounts are not for ssh probably they have other uses guard again fat props l2k okay so no ssh so let us access uh, copy 
port 3000. Now I can save, by the way, all of these. I can save all these documents. Okay. For let us access port 3000. Since now we are armed with Hugo's password, the temple lasers L2K, and the hint was to access it using uh, port 3000. What do I see here? Welcome, boss. Your manifesto has been recorded here for reference. So there is some audio file over here. Okay. Do I find anything interesting? Nothing much. Some audio file. Uh, let me check the page source. Nothing in it except this one. Okay. Let me check over here. Uh, 3000. The response, authenticate, Google manifest. There is something interesting over here are uh, the cookies. I have something called a profile. Okay. We will come to this in a while. So let's stop here and go back to our, um, where were we? Uh, let us go back where we were at the admin at the sales website the sales rep no not here the sales mode we have missed something we have read this one yeah this one we have found the website of dolly to access the photon and we got a link to HR forms and we found we found also good passwords. This is the cat gallery again. However, we missed to read Hugo's page moved to port 3000. We need to read this because it's going to give us hints now. There could be any hidden info in the audio files like the L. Yeah, sometimes yes. Sometimes yes. That's why you need to listen to it. You need to download it. But um, it seems I cannot share the audio from the VMware to your uh, to the uh, to the web conference, but I have listened to it. It's a clip from the movie, and I have checked the uh, the metadata as well. There, there wasn't anything like uh, interesting in it. But yes, you're right. We you should check. Uh, so let us check the Hugo's notes. Okay, this is very important. It's uh, notes about port 3000 so it's, get, it's gonna give us some hints about about this uh this url that we have just accessed okay so for your information hugo's custom page is being rebuilt over on the node.js server running on port 3000 here is a snippet of the back end code for cookie input mm. so there is a cookie that acts as an input and it goes where to the backend code. It's very important to concentrate on the cookie and the backend code. This is once you get past the username password prompt. Okay, we got past the username and password with Hugo's credentials we found on the HR confidential documents. And then the dev team is still creating most of the front end. Okay but we will have to secure the code since we are now not only tasked with sales, but also secure code review. How do they expect to offer all of these extra service without hiring more people? Never thought I would be an RD coder. Here is a snippet. Okay, this is a code snippet that runs in the back end. Okay, you will need Node.js and other stuff to run. It looks good to me, so I have pushed to production this is a code okay let us look at this code 
And if you here is a web developer, just say yes if you are a web developer. I know some of you are. Um, so we have few variables, okay. And one of them is a cookie parser, okay. I don't know, but I have some experience. Okay, good, Michael. And then serialize, okay. We're gonna talk about serialize in a bit. And then we have a function over here that reads the cookie profile. It reads the cookie profile. Remember, cookie profile, cookie input, and cookie profile over here, we found it, okay? So it reads the cookie profile, and what it does to it, it does, it converts, it does base64 decode, it's not encoding. So it does to string, which means convert from the encoded version to a decoded version, a normal string. And then it puts this string after it has been decoded into a function that we call unserialize. Okay, unserialize. And then it does whatever it does with it. And it has a default cookie. It has a default cookie, uh, which is this one over here, which is exactly the one that we see over here. However, the, uh, the equal equal at the end has been uh, URL encoded. So if I copy this one, okay, and I go online and I try to find like some base 64 decoder online, and then I would paste this one here. What do I see? Username Hugo, okay? So this profile, this profile cookie, okay, it goes from, from my web browser. It is submitted as a cookie, okay. It goes to the backend code. It is decoded. And after it has been decoded, it is unserialized. Let us talk about serialization and unserialization or deserialization because it's a very common web application password in JavaScript, in Java in general, and also in PHP. So we have covered all of that over here. Let's stop over here. Serialization is a concept in web application. When two web applications running on different servers want to communicate over the network. So a normal Java object can be treated within a single program. However, when a Java object needs to be transferred over the network to another web application, it cannot be transferred directly as it is. It has to be serialized, which means it has to be translated into stream of bytes and this is serialization. And after being transformed into stream of bytes, it is transferred. And then the other end does the reverse now. It does deserialization or unserialization. And then it becomes back its original object. The problem happens. The problem happens if node 2 does not filter uh, the object after it has been deserialized. So an attacker now would send a malicious serialized uh, code and then once it reaches node 2, it gets deserialized and then it gets executed. And then the malicious code gets executed. And this is the, the, the serialization vulnerability. And I have given a few examples over here, okay, in 2015 that affected uh, Oracle, uh, Oracle WebLogic server, and in 2017 affected the, uh, the SOFID uh, identity and access management application. So this is a common in JavaScript and PHP. And Node.js suffers from deserialization vulnerability when you use the unserialize function without filtering the object. 
we will do few uh, few tests now to understand more what's going on here because we can make a malicious code and submit it instead of the profile and then we can get some code executed at the server okay so let us do few assessment over here i have already installed on my kali linux node.js framework so i can compile and run i can run scripts written in uh, in javascript okay and for a more thorough tutorial on this i have given a link for a very beautiful uh, guide on node.js exploitation which you can read okay i've given the link over here okay it talks in detail this is exactly the same vulnerable code that we have seen okay at joe's website and here is like a proof of concept okay a proof of concept let me take this code and analyze what's going on over here this is taken from the web server i'm gonna save this as javascript i'm gonna call it serialization.js okay what do i have here i have a variable y okay and inside it there is a function and all it does is it does ls it executes a command okay and i'm gonna change this command to your name minus a this is a typical unix command okay and then this variable with this code is going to be serialized you see serialize the variable y while in here it is unserialized so we're gonna do the serialized version and then the unserialized version so i have this code serialization.js let me run it now so document moonraker live ls i have the serialization over here and then node serialization what i have done here i have serialized the code so i have this variable which is java object i cannot send it directly as a payload in http however if i serialize it i can send this code over http okay so this is the serialized version this is the highlighted over here is the serialized version of the code that is here okay so now the trick is the following i have not yet executed the unit minus a however in javascript i can trigger immediate execution of a function by adding at the end of it the open and the close parentheses at the following so by adding this alone after the function it means execute the function immediately so let me save this one and rerun this again you see i got the execution of the command in it now i have executed it while i am serializing it let us do the same with the unserialized thing so i can take this one copy it okay i'm gonna create another variable so let me remove this one here i'm gonna create var uh, x okay and then i'm gonna paste this one over here however in order to run it correctly i need to enclose it with single quotes put some semicolon and then i need to do a little bit of change over here so i need to remove all the new lines over here and do some escape of these single quotes otherwise they would conflict with my uh, single quotes in closing the statement and what i need to do now is i'm gonna call the 
serialized, serialized, dot unserialized lies for variable x. Okay. So this will serialize, this will unserialize variable x. Let me now run this one over here. Again, I have executed the first one, but notice that the second one was not executed. Just like I, I managed to trigger the execution of the first one with two parentheses, I can do the same with this one. That at the end, I can trigger with A parenthesis. Sorry, it should be before the double quotes. Note, I got the execution of the command. Now, which one was executed? The first function or the second one? Who can tell me? Was it Y or X that executed this command? Who can figure it out? Difficult, yeah? Actually, it was X, because X has got the double parentheses. The double parentheses means immediate execution of the function. Now, if I put this one here, and both have the double parentheses, I should get double execution of the same command. This one and this one. This one by the first and this one by the second. While if I remove the double parentheses, it's not executed anymore. Now, can you repeat if possible this serialization? Yes. Walid, have you understood this concept first? The general framework of the Okay, the concept is clear. Now, what I have done here is very simple. Variable y, okay, contains a function, a JavaScript that is unserialized. So, I can put a command over here. This is uh, unserialized. Unserialized means it is as it is, okay? A typical Java function javascript function okay without these parentheses this is a typical object i pass it to serialize to serialize it okay however as i am passing it to serialize if i add the parentheses the function will run as it is immediately generating the output over here okay when it is serialized because i am passing it to serialization the output would be this one this is the serialized version of variable y so variable x now is the serialized version of serialized this is the serialized version of variable y so variable x is the serialized version because it's serialized i am passing it to unserialized and just like adding parentheses over here triggers execution adding parentheses over here at the end of the function would it trigger execution of the un of the serialized version while it is being passed to the unserialized version the whole thing now if I can take a function, a malicious function, serialize it, okay, serialize it, and then put it as uh, base64 encoded and send it over here, it's going to be taken to the Node.js, being decoded, passed to the unserialized, and gets executed. And this is what I want to do to get a shell now. 
how do I do this? Since this function only does u name minus a, I need to create a more adequate function that opens a reverse shell for me, a reverse shell. Luckily, Metasploit already provide using netcat. Yes, exactly. I'm going to use netcat to put a listener, and then I'm going to create a function that connects to my netcat listener. So, luckily, I have Metasploit. So if I go to Metasploit framework, uh, module, payloads, okay, singles. I have under my payloads, I have a folder for Node.js. So if I enter cd Node.js ls, I have a bunch of payloads for reverse shell using Node.js. So I can create a payload, serialize it, and then encode it as base64, and then feed it to my uh, Node.js framework. So, let me go back to the home folder. Okay. I'm going to use MSF Venom, of course, MSF Venom, minus P, Node.js. This is the payload for Node.js shell, as we have seen it, reverse TCP, L host. This is my Kali Linux machine. 152 L port. Uh, let me put something like uh, uh, 5566. Okay. The Node.js shell reverse TCP is the one we have seen uh, in the payload single modules, if you recall. Okay, this is now my output. Okay, however, it needs some editing. So I'm gonna create here, I'm gonna remove these. I, I no longer need them, variable y and variable x. Okay, however, I'm gonna create a new variable. I'm gonna call it variable uh, a, okay equal this is the code that connects for reverse shell it is unserialized it's simply javascript no gs javascript i'm gonna paste it here i'm gonna remove first of all i'm gonna remove these two parentheses for execution because i don't need them for execution i need to remove this one i need to remove this one okay now i need to give it a name let me call it re reverse so that it looks like this one over here okay okay and there's this one over here okay anything else now it is a i need to serialize a now remember the code need to be serialized first step then base 64 encoding encoded second step because at the server side the reverse is gonna happen so serialize for me a and the print a save and let me run now node serialization okay an error over here so probably i do not need oh i need uh, i need something like this one here let me check if this is cancelled okay Okay, so my payload generated by MSF Venom is now serialized. This is the serialized version of 
uh, of my reverse shell in Node.js. All I need to do, I need to do two things before before I would uh, before I would uh, before I encode it in base sixty four. Okay, I need. I need to add the double parentheses over here. Okay. And then I have my code ready. So I added the double parentheses for embedded execution so that when it is being fed to the server, it is immediately executed. So let me copy it. Let me go to online base 64 uh, encoding. Type it here, encode. Okay, I got this one over here. Copy. So, I go back here. I need to replace this one with my payload and send it. But before that, I need to establish my, my netcat listener netcat minus l minus v minus p five five six six isn't it five five six six or six six five five it should be right here five five six six yeah it's right here five five six six good mike okay so it's listening and now i can I can do like I can do this in a couple of ways. I can either set a breakpoint, try to relink over here. Okay, try to relink, interrupt, and then change. Or I can simply simply re resend this whole request while modifying the profile. So I need to eliminate this one and paste my payload over here. And then send. Very large response okay did i get anything over here not yet okay something went wrong let me try to exit this couple of times let me reset again Okay, sent. Okay, let me ch check if I got, I have not. So probably I missed something. Maybe I need to encode it without the sign. No, this is, this is not important. This is not important, but I'm actually wondering if the curly brackets are making a big difference copy so let us do it this is the problem with live uh, demonstration but i already have uh, like a, a payload ready in case this does not work i have it ready already so copy let us do second time attempt recent profile Send connection reviews. Okay. Have we lost connection with the whole? Maybe the morning record itself crashed. 3000. The proxy. Something happened. Okay. I'm afraid the morning cracker changed its IP address. Something crashed over there. So let us do nmap quickly minus sn192.168.127.1.1.1. Okay. And then I need to add
connection refused okay it looks like my moonraker something got corrupted with the first uh, so let me restart it so probably the exploitation was let me restart it and I'm gonna open my backup my backup payload no GS payload payload this is the one okay yeah so probably the curly brackets was there so this removing them was was a mistake and then we added we added uh, this is the one over here let us compare okay this is exactly the same one anyways I'm gonna use this one now copy so let us see it okay so this is the one after rebooting not modify let me reset before sending it do i have my listener running five five six six the space at the beginning could be could be anything is possible that's why you need trial and error you need to try a few times sudo netcat l5566 okay sorry my initial payload had 6543 so here we have 6543 yes so let me put the i change the listener just to meet the uh, the previous payload change send okay i got the connection now so what happened was my payload went through it decoded base 64 as per the code that was shown here decoded and then it went to the unserialized function and once it is unserialized because i have at the end the double parentheses which which says immediate execution this was executed and i got a reverse shell over here okay so you name minus a linux moonraker who am i i am joes so the first thing i like to do over here is to actually get a pty uh, pty interactive okay so probably by mistake i close the session recent Connection refuse again. Hmm. Something is crashing. Restart guest. Okay. I'm going to explain now because we're running out of time. After we got this uh, access, I need to go through a process for uh, privilege escalation. Okay. And there are different ways to do privilege escalation when you get uh, when you get a normal shell. So in our example, we got a normal shell, and we need to get root. Okay, and there are like there is a different there is like a methodology for getting a root, and I recommend you all to read this guide on how to do privilege escalation on Linux system. Okay, it talks about all the possible ways. To get root okay we will discuss a few of them now probably i'm gonna need uh, 20 minutes more so 
hope you don't mind. It's gonna take uh, more than the scheduled time beyond 6 p.m. But I think we're having fun and we are enjoying it, everybody. Um, so, I'm gonna go back over here, try to send it. I have, this is up and running, send it. We got it over here. So, I like to get an interactive shell, Python minus C. This is always the first thing you do when you get uh, a normal shell that is not interactive. Pty.spawn bin bash. So, we are at Joe's. I am not root okay i am a typical user called joe's now and the home folder if i go to slash home ls i can see few things over here few other users okay i can access my home folder joe's so cd joe's okay ls i can do ls and print all files including hidden and uh, and uh, i can list all the files now, in order to get to root, as I said, there is like a methodology. There are different things I can do. The first thing I can do is to check if I have sudo permissions. Sudo permissions allow me to execute things as root. And if I have full sudo permissions, I can even switch to root and become root. The way I would do this, for example, in Kali Linux, for example, if I am here, this is a this is a limited privilege. I can do sudo minus l. Okay, enter the password of Kali, and I have I can run all commands as root. So by doing sudo su, I can become root. Okay, so can I check over here my sudo permission? I can do sudo minus l to check my permission. However, it's asking me for Joe's password. Maybe it's Dolly. So Dolly X99. It doesn't seem so. Dolly X99. No. So probably his shell password is different. So I cannot check even my permission. So th this is the first thing It's out of the box now for me. What do I do next after checking my sudo permission? The other thing I need to do is to check the history file of that user. So if I do ls minus alh, I can find here something called bash history. Bash history will contain the history commands of, uh, of the user Joe's. So if I do cat bash history, okay, I can see few commands over here okay now some of them are my own commands when i was playing around but if you download the moonraker fresh you should see only this much okay only this much now if you go and we check here since we know that joe's is the administrator of the couch db of the photon as we access he was going to this directory couch db configuration directory and then he was checking this file local.ini.initialization and this file generally contains the administrator password so it's very important if we can uh, cat this file we can read some juicy information and then he has done net stat okay checking probably the port number on which couchdb is being is listening and then there is something interesting here is checking the email folder okay so let us go to the var mail var mail and see if we get something interesting over here we have few files okay google moonraker nothing is for joe's okay and if we try to read any of them uh we get no permission moonraker tech no permission cat root cat sales no permission so we get no permission okay however let us read the initialization file of couchdb okay so opt couchdb etc so 
cd opt couch db etc ls cat dot sorry local dot any okay and you can see this is the configuration file okay this is the configuration file and at the end something is interesting over here this is the admin password even though it is commented okay we can still see it for Hugo this is the admin password so let me copy it and add it to the file over here okay this is Hugo's password we will use it in a while but before that another thing I need to do whenever I get a limited access is to check the the Linux kernel version your name minus a and my Linux version is 4.9.0 okay slash 7 I need to search if there are kernel exploits for this version so again as I told you already I can go to the exploit DB okay and then I try to search for Linux uh, 4.9.0 no matching nothing is matching 4.9 nothing is matching 4. Point blah. so we have 4.9 so this doesn't match of course the first one this does not match doesn't match doesn't match beyond the range beyond the range beyond the range all of these are beyond the range however this seems like between 4.10 and 5, even though uh, this one, this is of course below, below. Okay, this is simply denial of service. I don't care about denial of service. I want local exploitation. This is below. So I have two this is it says it is between 4.10 and 5.1 and since i have 4.9 so probably this exploit will not work okay if it was from 4.9 and 5.1 what i can do i can download the raw version okay compile it and run it and probably i can get root this is using a kernel vulnerability and this one is a, is a vulnerability for Linux kernel between 4.15 and 4.19. So it's still above, it's for a newer version. I have 4.9. Now, I have done enough research into 4.9.0. And I can tell you, no public exploit is available for this particular Linux version. So uh, doing a kernel exploitation is not possible. Uh, on Moonraker. However, because I have uh, done my research, uh, done our uh, footprinting, we found the Hugo's admin password. The, sorry, the Hugo's password. Okay, and we also, if you noticed, when we're browsing the mail folder, we found uh email file for hugo so if you can change to this user okay if you can change to this user then uh probably we can read his emails so let us switch to hugo su hugo and type his password three two one blast of blah 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 this is the password we got from the couch db configuration and then i am now hugo who am i i am hugo var mail i can read the emails of hugo so cat hugo okay looks like i can read hugo's emails the first email is from the tech guy okay he's the it engineer he's talking to hugo 
Okay. Remember, Hugo is the boss, the CEO, the founder of Drax company. Root access. He's replying to root access. So it looks like Hugo is asking the IT guy to give him root access. And the IT guy is saying, hey, Mr. Hugo Drax, I don't care if you are the president of the US. You will need to create a ticket for this request. Do you not understand the IT request process? Or do we need to require more manager online training? Okay. So he simply doesn't care if he is the boss. And probably Hugo replied to him with something. So the IT guy came back to him saying, Hugo, I am being given, given a reward. huh? Finally, some well-deserved recognition. So he promised him a reward. Also, this better come with a bump in pay. Otherwise, I'm not afraid to give you a piece of my mind. See you outside the decompression chamber shortly. As per your request, I'm expecting the award to be in hand as I don't like to get up from my desk. Also, your ticket has been complete. Since I am feeling nice today, I'm including the password here in its native hash in its native hash and not in the ticket. By the way, this is the old password hash. The new one is the same plus VR00M. So if we knew the old password, we simply add VR00M without quotes, similar to the way Dolly was appended to X99. Have fun with the decryption process, boss. Ha ha ha. And then we have this line who can tell me what this line remind you of like in general it seems like sha 52 it's much more than that sha 50 sha 512 is embedded in this line but this line with these numbers in here follows a typical format who can know what format this file is Anyone? This is the shadow file. Now, Mr. Hugo, since you were a witness to American accident, you will write a statement, blah, 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 deleted the footage. We don't care. Now, let me tell you something. You know that in Linux, the passwords, uh, the usernames are stored in a file called etc passwd. Right, and it has this format. And since our username is Kali, this is our line. The hash is not stored in the password file, it is stored in another file we call the shadow sudo cat etc shadow file. And this is the line for Kali. And each line in here contains the username semicolon. And then this is the dollar sign six indicates that the hash is SHA 512 because if it was dollar sign F, it means SHA 1, I believe. If it is dollar sign uh, 4, it means uh, blowfish or another format. And then dollar sign, and then we have something until, he, until the second dollar sign. This is the salt. Remember. Uh, Linux hashes are salted hash, salted hashes. So this is the salt, and then we have the SHA 512 all the way up to this semicolon, and these are uh, configuration or settings for the password, like uh, the expiration time, the minimum age, the maximum age, the expiration for the account, etc., etc. So uh, sometimes you can set them. Sometimes you can use the default, sometimes uh, you can set them the way you want. So this line is given by the IT administrator to Hugo as it is from the shadow file. So if you can crack this, uh, this uh, hash, we get the root access. Hugo is asking for the root access. And we have like few tools that can actually crack shadow files. Uh, the most common is, so let me save this one 
as root hash. Okay, the most common one is John the Ripper. Okay, you're probably familiar with John the Ripper. Another one is Hashcat. Okay, we're gonna use John the Ripper. So document moon raker. Okay, uh, sudo su. Let me make sure that I can root. I should delete first any John cache because I have used it before. So remove uh, this contains like previous cracked hashes. So I removed it so I can crack something fresh. Home Kali document Moonraker live and then John and then root hash. So if you can crack it now, and it is going to crack it, it cracked the root password, it says cyber. Now, who can tell me what is the password for the root now to access? It's not going to be cyber directly. Remember, this is the old password. The new one is going to be what su root exactly exactly cyber vr not double o it's zero zero m and we got root since we got root the flag is always under forward slash root ls flag dot text this is the flag i can Cat it and congratulations, you have stopped Hugo Drags and destroyed the station. Now, I have like base 64, even though I have rooted the machine, optionally, I can decode this base 64 to see what is, what is it that's talking about. Let me decode this message. Was Dolly wearing braces? It's up to you to answer this. I believe we have ended this session now. So, do you have any questions? I'm gonna like go through a little review now. But any questions so far? Do you have any questions? No questions, okay. So, let me give you additional tactics for privilege escalation. So when you wanna do privilege escalation, you got your hand into a low privileged, uh, a low privileged axis, okay, low privileged shell. We talked about the sudo minus L to check the sudo permissions. Now we have our both in their machines. Yes, yes, this could be okay. Of course, you can if you are root, you can delete them. You can do whatever you want. You can actually uh, do the the logs and delete them unless they are using sort of uh, same solution and all the logs are being transferred to another machine. So we have done the sudo. Sometimes you have a super doer. Uh, permissions. We have checked the bash history, and bash history. Sometimes you can find uh, confidential uh, confidential data. You can find the credentials. You can even find access to different files. The way we saw here, access to the mail, access to the CouchDB. You can do kernel vulnerability exploitation. So you always check the kernel version, and then you search for exploits. In a previous uh, capture the flag, we were doing privilege escalation using kernel exploitation. Those of you who have worked, for example, I believe in Typhoon or uh, Golden, uh, can't remember that machine, where we actually found few kernel exploits for that version. You can also search for set user ID programs. 
you can insert this command and set user ID uh, program. These are programs that, for example, they run as root, but you can actually run them. So you would run them, but they would run as root. And if they are misconfigured, they can you can like do stuff as root. So you can read the shadow files and so on. You can also find services running as root. For example, you can do stuff like psaux grip root. Sorry, psaux grip root and check these programs that are running as root. Like if you find vulnerable Apache running as root, it's very dangerous. If you can find MySQL running as root, and then you have access to MySQL, then you can do privilege escalation as well. Uh, in some machines, you can check the cron jobs, okay? And you can find some, cron jobs are scheduled tasks. So you can find some, some programs that run regularly, but you can write to them. So if you can write to them and they are running as root, you can also uh, do privilege escalation. So in our example here, we managed to do privilege escalation through the bash history method, okay? So, so far we have covered port scanning, uh, sorry, host discovery, port scanning in short and in, in full. And then we have done some uh, web application assessment, source code review, image metadata analysis, and uh, we have done also some uh, Node.js, uh, payload and exploitation. We have understood the serialization and deserialization process and how to exploit it in, in Node.js. And we have covered privilege escalation. I think I'm done so far. I hope you enjoyed the session. I would really, really love if you have any questions, just ask them right here. Okay, you have privileged of being live over uh, those who would watch it uh, recorded it is it is recorded it's going to be published also uh, so if you have any question please go ahead and ask thank you thank you michael or oh, thank you joseph Okay, thank you, Walid. Thank you, Muhammad. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, Haitham. Thank you, Ali. Thank you. So, no questions. Okay, okay, guys. Uh, enjoy uh, the rest of the evening and looking forward to seeing you in the future in future webinars. Bye bye.